What's going on with this case? I honestly don't know. I just know I got the call that my, my husband had been shot and um, they took him to Houston Northwest. He didn't make it. And I, now I'm here to try to figure out what's going on. It, does it surprise you or are you shocked? It, it, yes. it just seems hard to believe. It, 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 it's very hard to believe. It's, um, we've been married for 14 years. It's very hard to believe. Why did you decide to come down here this morning? Because that's my husband. Yeah. He's still my husband. Despite everything else, I have to figure out where to go next. I mean, what, what to do next? You know? I mean, we have grandkids. We have kids. We have nieces and nephews. That's still my husband. How has it been trying to explain all that to everybody? Or have you had a chance to? I, I, I don't understand it. So it's hard for me to explain because I don't understand it. James Jermaine Hargrove, born March 14th, 1978, was a beloved man to everyone around him, as he was a people pleaser in a good way. If you were around James, you were bound to have a good time. He always made sure his people were comfortable, so if you were coming over to his house, expect there to be music playing, some dominoes games going, some basketball, some barbecuing, even movie nights in the theater that he had in his home. He made sure to have the blankets and the snacks set up for his loved ones and he loved the kids. In fact, he was a father, a grandfather, a godfather, and a foster father. To know James was to be entertained and to love him. So you can imagine the shock and pain that traveled through everyone's hearts when James' fate was sealed at the hands of someone so close to him just last year. On Saturday, May 7th, 2022, James arrived at his home located at 23642 Boutress Root Drive in Spring, Texas, just north of Houston, in the early hours of the morning, just before 2 a.m. Upon arrival, James had a woman with him in hand whose name is still unknown to this day from what I can see in my research. Anyway, James went inside of his home with this woman he had with him, but they weren't the only ones there. You see, James is with a woman named Karen Stewart, who was 51 years old at the time, and they shared their home together. Well, James decided that at almost 2 a.m. with a different woman on his arm in the home he shared with Karen to tell Karen to her face that he no longer wanted to be with her and he wanted to be with his new girlfriend who was the woman present with him at that time. He told Karen he no longer loved her. He was in love with his new girlfriend and this was the end for him and her. Well, apparently this sent Karen flying into a jealous rage and a very angry Karen went and grabbed a firearm in the home and she 44 year old James multiple times killed him instantly. Police arrived at the home after responding to a call and found James's body in the home riddled with bullet wounds. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez made the statement that James was taken to the Houston Northwest Hospital where he was pronounced deceased. Karen was arrested and charged with murder after confessing to authorities that she killed her husband James because he told her he was moving on. She was sent to Harris County Jail and her bond was set to $75,000. Now, I just told you that Karen told authorities that she murdered her husband. However, that isn't true. Karen lied about James being her husband. In fact, they were never married. Karen was James's on again, off again girlfriend for seven years. However, James was a married man and it was revealed that he was married when his actual wife popped up into the picture. You see, a woman by the name of Sandra showed up to Karen's court appearance that following Monday on May 9th, 2022, and she told a KPRC TV reporter that she is actually James's real wife his legal wife by law on paper. Sandra Hargrove said she was called and was told that James had been murdered 
heard. And that's why she even showed up to the hearing because she was trying to get a better understanding of what even happened. When she was asked about her knowledge of who Karen was, Sandra said she never met the woman before and was under the impression that Karen was his caretaker and didn't know that they was even in a romantic relationship. In fact, the entire story left her in a state of shock because she was truly unaware of all that was going on in James's personal love life. You see, Sandra and James met in 2006, but they got married in 2009 and they became separated in November of 2021. Now, much before their separation, James fell ill to COVID and suffered from a ton of health issues as a result of that, including a four-month coma, paralyzed for a whole year, two heart attacks, kidney failure, and a stroke. He had just learned how to start walking again, so she assumed that Karen was like his live-in caretaker helping him out in the house. And she also said she didn't know anything about the other girlfriend that he was with that morning. Sandra was married to James for all of 13 years at the time, and regardless of their separation and all that they've been through, she said they were still the best of friends. They shared children together and grandchildren. They talked on the phone every day and even considered getting back together and reconciling their marriage. Here's a heartfelt post that his wife wrote on Facebook about him. You can pause this to read it. Well, a surprise twist today for a murder suspect in Spring, Texas, caught in a love triangle. A woman accused of killing her lover over his other lover finds out that he had a wife all along <laughs> too. Fox 26 is Tiffany Justice live with this deadly affair. The wife saying the Emmy's office finally released the body to her after confusion over who was the real wife. A love triangle leaves a spring man dead. The Harris County Sheriff's Office saying an adult female, Karen Stewart, advised responding deputies that she shot her husband after he told her he was in love with another woman. That other woman was with him at the time. Karen Stewart is now in jail, charged with murder. Her bond set at $75,000. The love triangle unfolding as investigators learn more. Stewart is a girlfriend of James Hardgrove, the victim. James married but recently separated. I got the call that my, my husband had been shot and um, they took him to Houston Northwest. He didn't make it. It's very hard to believe. It's, um, we've been married for 14 years. It's very hard to believe. Sandra Hartgrove, the wife, is in disbelief, saying they separated in November and that she was unaware of the other women. I've never met the person. I have no idea. My knowledge is she's a caregiver. She says James was her best friend and they spoke every other day. Now, on surveillance from a neighbor's home, you can actually see footage of a woman running frantically from the home that where James was murdered. Well, that was the woman that he brought with him to confront Karen. You see, the woman who said she was 41 years old at the time spoke to Montgomery County police reporter over the phone at that time and asked for her name to remain anonymous. And she told them that she didn't know what James was going to do when they pulled up to the house. She also spoke to deputies and she told them that she assumed that her and James were in an open relationship and that maybe he was bringing her to meet this other woman and that they were all going to to just sit down, become familiar, and discuss whatever their arrangements would be. However, when they got there, she said James told Karen that he was now in love with her, Miss Anonymous, and he wanted them to be able to sit down and talk about it and discuss that he no longer wanted to be with Karen. The woman said she never expected that, nor did she expect what happened after that. She said about 30 minutes after the confrontation, Karen went into the bedroom, got the gun, came back out, and she James right in front of her. That's when you see the woman on the surveillance video jetting out of the home and she said as she was running she heard several more shots go off. The woman was able to escape the scene unscathed. If that's not enough what's even more crazy is apparently Karen already had a criminal history of domestic violence. You see Karen had previously been married and in that marriage Karen had sprayed lighter fluid in her ex-husband's face with the intentions of setting him on fire and in January of 2016 16 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Karen had attempted to kill her ex-husband by running him over with her car because they got into an argument over 
for a set of keys. She was charged with felony battery at the time, but in 2018, her charges were lowered to simple battery, where she pled guilty. I'm wondering if James even knew all this about her. On May 9, 2022, Sandra created a GoFundMe account asking for assistance with the costs of James' funeral and burial. The goal was set at $10,000, but she was only able to raise $3,260 of that goal. James's funeral was held on Saturday, May 14, 2022, at the Southeast Community Church located at 10413 Asheville Drive in Houston, Texas. And his burial was at the Paradise Cemetery South, located at 2237 Cullen Boulevard in Pearland, Texas. Now, I don't know what James was thinking when he did what he did and why he chose 2 a.m. to have this conversation with Karen. I don't know if maybe he was inebriated and so maybe that clouded his judgment. I don't know why he chose to bring the other woman with him. Maybe he thought if he had someone with him, it would be a safer option for him. Maybe he's experienced abuse from Karen before and was afraid to confront her alone. As for the other woman, I'm not sure why she even thought they were going to just have a simple conversation at 2 a.m. about their relations. Like, I find the mind frame of all parties involved to be quite fascinating in a peculiar way if I'm being honest and I say that with no malice of any kind however clearly when it came to women James had a hard time remaining faithful if he was in a whole relationship with Karen for seven years while he was married to Sandra before they were even legally separated then to me that that speaks to his pattern of infidelities. However, what I found to be the most disturbing part of my research on this story is the amount of women who openly expressed how happy they were that Karen did what she did to James because they thought that she was his wife at first and the pain that was in her face in her mugshot allowed them to feel an immense amount of sympathy for her, excusing her actions simply because she's a woman with emotions. However, I have to make it very clear on my platform, especially since I've covered plenty of domestic violence stories where a woman was on the receiving end of the abuse, that violence of any kind is never okay no matter what gender you identify as, unless it's a matter of protecting your life or the life of your children. Never is it okay to just go around abusing, mistreating, people just because you're mad or jealous or envious or feel a loss of control or anything surrounding those matters. James was cold for moving how he did with these women. However, it didn't want for this woman to take his life. She clearly has issues as she trying to take her last man's life too. You know, I wouldn't really care if she was his wife. Never in this lifetime or the next was this crime ever going to be excusable ever. And so I'm terribly disappointed to see so many women specifically rallying for this woman even after finding out she wasn't even his wife she was lying had this been the other way around we wouldn't even see that kind of coddling for any man period it's not okay on any side of the spectrum even his wife had to hop under the comments of a facebook post a woman wrote and she had to speak up and say no this woman does not deserve to be released from prison it's just you know it's just very sad to see how many have tried to excuse this woman's violent behavior and i even saw the same thing with the story of Jen Jeremy Brown that I did where his wife Khadija shot and killed him in a fit of rage as well. Trying to use this made up story about Jeremy being a down low undercover bisexual man as an excuse for her murdering him when that wasn't even the case. So no, in no circumstance is it okay for anyone to lose their lives at the hands of another human as a result of uncontrolled emotions. James wasn't perfect but he didn't deserve to be murdered period. The last update for Karen I can only seem to find comes from a year ago during the time all this first happened and it was said that she requested the permission to live with her relatives in Louisiana if she was released on bond which the judge on the case requested additional information before ruling on that request. If she would have been released on bond the conditions would be she'd need to wear an ankle monitor with GPS tracking on it and submit drug screenings. Her next court date was dated for August 17th 2022. Honestly I searched high and low on the internet for any updates as of this year on Karen, but I can't find a thing. I can't even find her arrest information on the Harris County Sheriff's Office website. I searched her first name and last name. I tried including her middle name. I even tried spelling her name with a C. I even just typed in the first few initials in the searches of the Texas inmate database and everything, but nothing comes up, which makes me wonder if she's even still in jail. I don't know, but that's why in my disclaimer, it says that if you feel that there's any information, 
listen, feel free to do your own research always, you know, in case there's anything you'd like to know that maybe I couldn't deliver. It's crazy to me how James was able to survive all of those health ailments too, only to lose his ninth life to a woman scorn. Mm-mm-mm. And with that, I am sending my condolences to James's wife, Sandra, who knew nothing about this woman or anything that was going on. I can only imagine the pain that she feels being left out of the loop like that and just to find out that her husband was killed. I'm sending my condolences to his children, his grandchildren, the rest of his family, and all of his loved ones. Rest in peace, James Hargrove. I pray that your spirit is resting in peace.